join me in our opening prayer, please. Almighty God, the source of knowledge of understanding, guide the minds of those of us who are about to take counsel together on matters concerning this county, that in our debate and in the decisions, we may faithfully discharge our duties of office and promote the health, safety and well-being of those we seek to serve. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> Fellow councillors, officers and members of the public who are listening in via the Zoom webcast, welcome to our council meeting this evening. Please can I remind members to ensure that your microphones are switched on when speaking so that you, those listening tonight and via the subsequent YouTube video can hear you. I also like to remind members that in accordance with procedure rule 10, a recorded vote is required when setting the county council's budget and determining the level of council tax to be levied for each financial year. This applies to votes tonight in respect of item eight, the council tax, and part of the report from the cabinet, specifically the recommendations of report number nine stroke 2022. Thank you. Now to the agenda proper. Apologies, please. Chairman, we've received apologies from councillors Cross, Rizal and Webb. Therefore, councillors voting to 23 this evening. Thank you. Chairman's announcements. Um, we have uh, we notified members yet of the, um, the British Legion one. Yeah, okay. I'd like to remind you, members, the previously circulated invitation from the Vicar of Oakham and the Chairman of Oakham British Legion to the rededication of the memorial taking place on the 11th of April this year. If members could try and attend to that, it would be great, please. Um, announcements from leader, item three. Do we have any announcements for the leader or from the leader or portfolio holders? No, thank you. Declarations of interest. I'll go around the table. Councillor Stevenson. Um, thank you. <clears throat> um, the fees and charges, um, if I could declare an interest, because I have an A board for our bookshop, and I believe, looking at the monitoring officer, I may stay for the debate um, but uh, and take part, as long as it's not about A boards, and I won't vote at the end with that decision. Yes, it's a personal interest. Yeah, personal interest. Thank you. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. It's for the same agenda item, 462022. Um, uh, personal reasons again, blue badge holder, home to school transport. The monitoring officer has agreed I can remain for the debate but not vote. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Baines. Thank you very much indeed, Chairman. I'm, <coughs> I'm the proud owner of half an A, a board, and so therefore, um, uh, like Councillor Stevenson, I will not repeat, but follow the same advice. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Thank you. So that's declaration of interest. Uh, petitions, deputations, and questions from members of the public? None received this evening. Thank you. Questions from members of the council. We have one question this evening. Councillor Powell, would you like to ask your question, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. May I first ask who I'm addressing the question to, as I thought was addressed to Councillor Rizal. Oh, thank you. Um, the report 09 2022, the final revenue and capital budget tabled for this meeting confirms that Rutland currently holds 7.443 million unallocated developers contributions, which include community infrastructure levy section 106 and Oakham North payments. Whilst the plan for this money is being developed to support the new local plan, plan can members be assured that where there are any deadlines for spending included with en within any of these agreements, that procedures are in place to ensure that these contributions will actually be spent by the due dates on infrastructure, which will be of benefit to Rutland residents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hemsley, I believe you're going to respond. I am going to respond on behalf of Councillor Rizal. Councillor Rizal. Thank you very much. So deadlines for spending developer contributions only applies to 106 money. 
And based on the public infrastructure funding statement and the provision within the S106 agreement for maintenance sums, the total of not committed S106 monies is at March 2021, 2.726 million. There is no deadline for spending of SIL or the Oakham North contributions, which actually sit outside both SIL and 106 regimes. We have an internal review process in place involving planning, finance, and the director of places to review on an annual basis the amount of money we hold for, from 106. Identifying what the money is for and what the deadlines <coughs> to spend are. Once this base information has been identified, service managers and directors are asked to identify schemes for spend within the year. This then forms part of the council's capital programme. There is a focus on looking at agreements 18 months prior to an expiry date to ensure contributions are committed and spent by due dates. I would also like to bring to your attention a document which was put on your um, places earlier, which is actually developer contributions, and there's some really good information on there that will help you with the questions. Or I can it will be public appended to the minutes. Sorry, um, tonight. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for that information, Councillor Helmsley. I know that um, past performance isn't necessarily a reliable indicator of future performance, and I hope in this case it isn't. But I ask this question, given the recent history of the Council in some emissions of collecting about, I think, £180,000 of community infrastructure level, levy and other historical emissions relating to developer contributions. And as you've said, the, the recommendation um, and processes, there was an internal audit report in November 20, where that recommended that where deadlines apply, contributions are promptly allocated and spent by the expiry date to avoid any developer clawback. So it's, it's reassuring to know that that has now been put into place. Um, the monies that is unallocated is obviously been collected from um, developments that have already happened. And um, I just feel that residents deserve to have the infrastructure in place to, do, to improve their daily lives, and particularly that the council pays due attention and acts to make sure that um, residents get the best use of these hard-won developer contributions. Thank you. Thank you. I fully agree. I'm not sure there's a full question there, but it is important that, uh, that the money goes to support our communities. And obviously, as I did say, you know, they're identified by service managers to identify schemes for, to spend within the year, and those schemes would be to support our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven, a report from Cabinet. We have a report, 4 6 stroke 2022, from the Cabinet this evening, requesting Council's approval for a number of budget recommendations. I'd like to remind members that under the procedure rules 41 and 43, members are expected to only speak once on any motion and for a maximum of five minutes. I intend to first take recommendations related to report number three, 2022, fees and charges, so that members with any interest may leave and then return for the remainder of the meeting. No, that's right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, Councillor Payne, could you make your report, please? Thank you, Chair. Fees and charges represent a significant source of finance for the Council. The Council receives approximately £4 million from fees and charges each year. The Council have to review fees and charges on an annual basis as part of the budget and Council tax setting process. The document you have in your pack summarises the proposed changes for 22-23. It's self-explanatory and reflects the fact there are some new fees and charges this year. Please note that the green waste charges in the document were approved at Council in July 21. Other changes will come into effect from April 22. These changes exclude taxi and private hire vehicles, which will be subject to consultation through public notice procedure and will be brought back for approval following consultation. It is important that fees and charges are set at an appropriate level to maximise income potential. Where the council is able to set that fee, we seek to recover our costs and have set inflation at 5%. As yet, nationally set fees have not been notified to us by the government. The document you have today was presented to all scrutiny committees at the end of January, and there were no recommendations or changes discussed. 
I ask Council to approve the fees and charges in front of you today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Hamsey. Members, have we got any questions? Debate. Councillor Walters. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members will be uh, aware of my concerns regarding the green bin charges. Uh, however, uh, I do take the point that we have previously approved these. In fact, I referred to that in my email, and I accept that we are all jointly responsible, having um, responsibility for that. Nonetheless, having had the matter brought to my attention subsequently by members of the public, I do believe that the way we have constructed this does imply punitive charges on some of our residents. As such, I will not be able to support the recommendation as proposed, although I appreciate we are in a pretty pickle. Uh, I trust that in years going forward, uh, we will pay attention to this one. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Brown. A. Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so on Appendix 3, there's um, car parking tariffs, and, and it says if you pay by phone, there's a 20p convenience fee which means the one hour parking has actually gone down from a pound to 90p. I, just, uh, I was just a bit confused about the convenience fee and uh, what it, I, I assume it's for, for paying with your mobile phone, but it just seems a bit strange that it's gone down from a pound to 90p because that surely the hour parking is, um, is the most commonly used um, parking fee. Cash pain or... Counts. Who's going? Um, sorry, Chair, we're just debating quietly amongst ourselves. It's no longer my portfolio, and obviously the portfolio holder Hello. isn't here. Are you happy for us to take that away and um, get a, an, an answer for that? Thank you. Anybody else? No, I don't think so. You didn't ask a question, did you? No, I didn't. Councillor Walters. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Not specifically. It would be helpful to have reassurance that, we'd be, that we would be cautious in years going forward to avoid accusations of applying punitive charges. Um, thank you. If, you, if you're happy, Councillor Payne, I will take that one. Um, so just out of interest, if, this is a little unorthodox, Chair, I I hope this is acceptable. Um, hands up, how many members in this room have been directly approached by residents with regard to paying £48 for a green bin? Thank you, that's very useful to see. Um, the £45? So it is precisely the £3 for that. Um, I would like to point out just a couple of general principles around our waste. The aim in Rutland is that we reduce our waste, whether that's black, green or grey bin. And I absolutely appreciate your logic, Councillor Walters. It feels punitive. It feels punitive to say, oh, actually, if you're not paying online, if you're not using direct debit, if you're using our staff resources in order to have that service, it feels punitive. I would suggest it's actually a slightly different position with that. We, we pass principles saying that we would signpost and assist our residents to be able to self-serve more. So I'm very mindful, Councillor Walters, that as we've approved things at Cabinet, which you were on at that point, we then approved them at full council, including the principles, to then have a bit of a U-turn, I don't, I don't think is a wise way to um, organise policy within council. However, Councillor Walters, I take your point and I'd be very happy to take that forward for our usual discussions for 23-24. Thank you, Chair. Point of explanation, Chairman. The punitive charge that I refer to is not the three pounds for a bin. It is six pounds for two bins, nine pounds for three bins, if they aren't making one telephone call, why should someone pay three times as much for making one payment? Yeah. Yep. Um, so, as I said, I will take that away for 23-24. What I would ask members to think about 
is whether or not it's appropriate that we should be enabling two bins, three bins, four bins, five bins, and that perhaps our overall aim with waste is that we are reducing and we need to support our residents to do that. But I will certainly take that away, Councillor Walters. I'm not aware of any properties needing more than two bins, but I can, of course, check that precise data with the environmental services. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It was just to, to follow up on the um, the principles regarding the green bins, and I I absolutely accept that it was approved by um, Council last July. There's no point reviewing that and actually to to have it looked at again next year. But I think it was approved amongst the budget saving measures that were were agreed at that council meeting, and. I do think it's, it is a matter of principle that this council should actually consider for all our charges, whether we're going to charge differential rates according to how people pay. Because I think there's a, math, there's a principle of inclusivity there and fairness to residents. So it's, I, I don't know how many other issues there are where we charge differential rates, but I do believe that should have been brought to the attention of council as a sort of a matter of principle for us to debate and decide that principle. So I'd hope that in reviewing on the green bins as an example of that, we could actually look at the different areas where we do charge different amounts, because I do not feel that that is being fair to all residents. We might want to encourage online interaction, but I think we all have to have a responsibility to be fair and inclusive and not penalize people who for whatever reason cannot pay by direct debit or other online means. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Payne. Thank you, Councillor Powell. Um, I think it did actually state in the document that we approved in July that we were making that differential. I'm not aware that we make that differential on any other fees and charges, but would suggest that we consider that again when we um, do the review for the, for the next year's annual bin charges. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? The, the recommendations are that council one approves the level of fees and charges for 2022-23 as out, set out in appendices one to four except for taxi and private hire vehicle licenses item two approves new fees for learning disability day center places highways vehicle access permits and s2278 agreement Minimum fee, agreement, minimum fee, sorry. Parking of solo motorcycles, blue badge over three hours. Permits for residents in zone A and U3A permits for visitors of residents in zone C, E and V and permits for carers. Coach parking at Kilburn Road. New parking service services delivery, collection and photocopying of permits and season tickets. Installation of an advisory blue badge bays on street. S106 monitoring fees and exceptional review of community infrastructure levy. Museum and castle full day hire and exclusive hire of the castle for ceremonies. Registrar's diary amendments and bookings. Two, notes that taxi and private hire vehicle license fees will be subject to change based on the outcome of forthcoming consultation through a public notice procedure and be brought back for approval following that consultation. All in favour? Nineteen, I believe, Chairman. Thank you. Against? One, Chairman. One. Abstentions? Two, three, yeah, three, Chairman. Thank you. So that is carried. Thank you. Next, we have the recommendations of report number two, 2022 Treasury Management Strategy and Capital Investment Strategy. Councillor Payne, would you like to re present your report, please? Thank you again, Chair. Um, the Treasury management policy is about setting our approach to investment and borrowing in the context of our capital expenditure plans. 
In light of some irresponsible capital expenditure plans and a number of other local authorities, the whole area is under significant scrutiny at the moment, and KIPFA have been consulting on a number of changes, many of which don't affect us directly. KIPFA will be tightening the Treasury Management Guidelines to ensure councils act prudently. These changes come into force in 23-24, but we are adopting these early where possible. What's being proposed doesn't fundamentally change our approach. In respect to investment, we will continue to make a range of short-term investments given the uncertainty over interest rates in the market at the moment and the current turmoil in the political world. Also importantly, we will continue to adopt a safe and low risk approach to investment. It's important to note that credit agencies we use take into account environmental factors in the credit rating system. This is one thing we will look at in further depth in the next, next 12 to 24 months. At present, there will be no change in our investment approach and we will continue to invest with AAA rated banks and building societies. Credit ratings do take into account environmental approach when they are awarded. We acknowledge the desire to devolve away from companies investing in fossil fuels and over the next 12 months we'll work with other local authorities to see how practice might evolve to invest in green technologies in the future. But security of investment will always override the rate of return. Our strategy on borrowing is that we will avoid if we can, we will avoid it if we can, or unless it's absolutely required. Borrowing is the one area where we have made technical change in response to kit for advice. We will not borrow for purely financial gain. And using in an example, we won't make speculative investment, say, in a property in Edinburgh, just to gain a potential return on investment. However, we will borrow to invest to solve a local problem where there is a financial imperative gain and benefit to the Rutland community. Using another example, we could, for instance, purchase a care home if we could run it more cheaply than a third party provider and remove revenue costs from the council budget. That's just an example, it's not to say we're gonna do it. To reflect the new kit for guidelines, we have removed the 10 million pounds which would have been borrowed, set aside in the capital budget to make purely a commercial investment. And we have reworked our commercially investment strategy into an investor safe policy. Um, as, as commented earlier. We will consider any borrowing on a case-by-case -case basis if we need to in line with the new guidelines. In relation to the capital strategy, this sets out our approach to capital spending. And at the moment, it's quite short term. We want this to be a long-term capital investment plan. So again, over the next 12 months, we will be building and developing our capital strategy with a 10 year vision to underpin the new corporate plan. This will give the Rutland community a view of what the council will be investing in over the next 10 years and will cover all sources of revenue, grants, borrowing, SIL and section 106. We have had questions from members in this regard previously. Chairman, I'm asking the council to approve the treasury management and capital investment strategy as defined, detailed in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Hemsley? Members? Anybody? No? The recommendations are that Council 1 approves the Treasury Management Strategy in Appendix 1 of the report, including the Investment Strategy, Borrowing Strategy, Minimum Revenue, Provision Statement and Capital Expenditure Prudential Indicators and two, approves the capital investment strategy in appendix two of the report. All those in favour? I believe that's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. We now come to the rec recommendations of report number nine, 2022, revenue and capital budget 22-23. Councillor Payne, busy night. It is a busy night, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I'm presenting to Council tonight the budget for 22-23. The headlines are, we are setting a budget of 42.345 million. We are proposing a Council tax increase of 4.99%, 3% of which is adult social care precept. 
there is a forecast deficit in the following financial year, 23-24, of over £2 million in the medium-term financial plan. I will cover these points and others in more detail. Our public consultation of the budget completed on the 9th of February. We ran this online and through face-to-face -face events in Uppingham and Oakham marketplaces. And I found it really great to be able to get out and talk to people. I estimate that we talked to around 600 residents and many visitors who came regularly to the market to enjoy a day out in our lovely county. This was a one council event supported by many of my colleagues in the room tonight. And I thank them all for their contribution, especially supporting cold outdoor sessions at the end of January. Thank you all. It was good to get the chance to listen to residents concerned and issues. Not all of them, not all of these were about budget, I have to say. But as far as the budget was concerned, there was overwhelming support for the set of principles the council agreed last July that underpin our financial decision making. This is good news as council have some significant decisions to make next month where these principles will need to be applied, but more about that later. From the consultation, I took away three things. We need to involve residents more in our decision-making and hear more from them on key issues. The future Rutland conversation has gone a long way towards this and we need to continue the momentum through the corporate plan and beyond. But councillors, we all have a role to play in this, keeping our residents informed and engaged in all council matters. We have to accept that not all residents will agree on all subjects. Some gave feedback that our roads are fantastic, others felt they were awful. Some who weren't in receipt of adult social care thought we spent too much on it, whereas some who required help thought we could spend more in this area. In budget terms, the biggest issue for residents was the fact that Rutland receives much less funding per household than other unitary councils, and our residents pay higher council tax as a result. All councillors around this table know our funding position, and I think the last point I mentioned is unfair, as do our residents. We are working hard with our MP, Alicia Kearns, to do something about it. Alicia is supporting us in our lobbying and has facilitated a meeting in the diary next week with Kemi Badenoff, MP, uh, Minister for Leveling Up Communities at the Ministry of Leveling Up Housing and Communities. We will press hard for a positive result and keep residents informed in, in respect to progress in this regard. Moving on, looking back over the last 12 months, I have very mixed feelings. We were facing a potential deficit of 2.6 million, but through hard work, amazingly, we delivered over two million pounds worth of savings, which is something we should all be very pleased and proud about. It's a great result. However, it is extremely frustrating, therefore, that looking 12 months ahead in 23-24, we find ourselves with another £2 million plus deficit. It could be more, it could be less, but it is a big forecast hole in our budget. We need to go further and deeper to close the financial gap. Therefore, we are in the process of looking at all areas of spend, what we can't control and what we can. This work will be presented to councillors in April when we, have made, when we will have to, all of us around this table, make some tough decisions. We took the low hanging fruit, the easy stuff this year. The next round of cost savings will be more difficult and will impact our services. We have a mountain to climb. In April, we need to decide and prioritize our options and how we engage our residents in this. Make no mistake, we will need to be ruthless in our decisions. We will need to deliver, deliver less and do it far more effectively than we are doing it at the present time to make any significant lasting change to our cost base. We need to change the way we work dramatically and around this table you will have a role to play in this. Moving on to council tax, the budget assumes a maximum council tax rise of 4.99%. It's not an ask I'm happy about, I know what pressure hardworking families are under in an uncertain economic environment, both in the UK and indeed as last week's events have unfolded in the world. But even after delivering a massive saving of over two million pounds since we approved last year's budget, 
It's what we need to do to balance the books for 22-23. These savings and the government funding we have received are not enough to keep services going and deliver new statutory services. To name one, demand adult social care reforms, which will have significant long-term impact on council resource. We know, of course, that for some families, this will be an extra pressure. So we are offering an extra 100% discount to those families on council tax support. On top of this, we will be paying all households in bands A to D an extra £150 in April, as announced by the Chancellor recently. This is positive, and we hope it will go some way towards easing the burden for families that need it. The budget was scrutinised by adults and children's and growth and infrastructure resources scrutiny committees at the end of January. Thank you to committee members for their hard work in this regard. There were no formal recommendations put forward, but I need to acknowledge the fact there was much discussion about the inclusion of a new post for a climate change officer. I'm pleased there was extended debate. We should never take any decision to increase the budget lightly, doesn't matter how much by. We should always challenge and scrutinise to deliver a robust decision. As a council, we need to be absolutely clear on what we're going to do to meet the climate change motion. We need to have this clarity and need to, this post to deliver it. If at some stage in the future we find we no longer require the post, then we will deal with that and remove the position. Similarly at scrutiny, there was also debate, although no formal recommendation was made, over the requirement to bring consultants in to help us identify cost savings. We need help to restructure and change the way we work. We need a critical friend to help us make the transformation. The council could look very different in the future and experienced external challenge and ideas, I strongly believe, will help us deliver a leaner, fitter council to the benefit of our residents. A huge amount of work has gone into producing the budget and clear, concise papers that support all you have read and heard tonight. Thank you to all the officers for pulling it all together in such an understandable format. Please be clear, there is still a mountain to climb to deliver cost savings this year that will close the forecast deficit of £2 million in our medium term financial plan. We all have some difficult decisions to make over the coming months. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I would like to propose the budget for 2022 23. Thank you very much. Second, Councillor Hemsley. Second, Councillor Hemsley. Members, has anybody got anything to say? Councillor Waller. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I was one of the people who criticised the concept of bringing in a consultant to help us with the savings. I hope before we do that, that we do actually respond positively to the member of the public who referred us to the Department for Communities and Local Government 50 Ways to Save document. I acknowledge that this document is actually quite an old document, albeit recently updated, and some of the proposals, then it wouldn't save us money nowadays. That's perfectly clear from reading it. But nevertheless, it's got some suggestions that we ought to be um, thinking about, I would suggest. So that's my sort of first general comment. I'm coming to a question as well, Chairman. Um, clearly, I've read the comments made by our residents and whilst in terms of ticking the box part they generally feel they know what we're doing financially when it comes to the comments it's rather clear that they don't always uh, for example um not only 19 percent of our residents think we've got no control over um pay increases for staff well we all know we are part of a national agreement and so we don't have any control over pay increases but our residents seem to think we do um, they also seem to think that if we went back into Le leicestershire our rates would or our council tax would suddenly go plummeting down which again is patently not the case we know um, and 
They also are trying to encourage us to actively, sorry, I'm reading this out, actively apply for as much government, national heritage, lottery funding, arts council funding, et cetera, that we can. We do, we know we do. And our officers have had phenomenal success in getting grants. And we've stood in this council chamber and applauded that. So my question, leader, is this. Can somebody go through all of these comments, identify where the writer has clearly a misunderstanding, and I'm not blaming people for that because we are uh, not as transparent as we might be in, in public service, but do a um, questions frequently asked with an answer that we can put on our website so people can actually get the answers to these things or have, have it clarified for them, because I think that would help everybody. Thank you very much for that question. I'm going to stick my neck on the line and say, yes, we will go through that and do that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Chairman. Um, I entirely concur with uh, what Councillor Waller had said about the uh, hundred and odd people who said that they understood the budget. They clearly weren't the ones who asked the question. Um, but what I would like to say, and I thank Councillor Payne and everybody else who did a far more effective method of consultation, they actually went out and spoke to people. And I honestly think, I mean, I've heard what the leader had to say, and uh, if he thinks that is a, a useful um, um, way of spending officer resource, absolutely fine. As I read those um, comments in Appendix 8, um, they divided very roughly into three. People who were um, annoyed because something they wanted had disappeared, people who wanted something that they hadn't got, and people who were making um, political points. And again, I'd endorse what Councillor Wallace said about Leicestershire. When we had our disaggregation, and this is not just being rough and partial, this was the independent assessment that we were underpaid by about £2 million at that point. That would have been something like four to six percent less council tax then. We also were caught up in the um, employment law um, and therefore um, priority um, concern for existing employees. So it's a bit like Brexit members. It looked as if it was a clean start. It was in fact, we were starting with one hand fiscally tied behind our back. And if you think that uh, going back into Leicestershire, where we had three representatives on a council of 50 plus, Rutland will be marginalised completely. So I think there were a lot of misconceptions and I just make one final point. And again, I would say thank you to all those colleagues and particularly land councillor Payne, because that is the way to really get the message across. It's not just a matter of individual points in the budget or one thing or another it's being able to explain to people how this council operates and and i think that was something that was far more important in a way than the actual considerations of this budget and i just make one final point chairman ever since i've been on this council and you as well we have known that the grant system um, is very unfair to rutland that we have to find 80% um, rather than the 60 uh, that most authorities. And I'll link that in with the Leicestershire thing. One of the problems is that we have urban metrics for a rural area. If we're part of Leicestershire, Leicester City, that will still apply. And what I would ask, and I know the leader is aware of this, what I would ask that we do is that we really use our links with SPA uh, with sparse to get um, lobbying on behalf of all rural areas. It's, I noticed the references to the MP, but the MP alone needs to be supported. And certainly I found them extremely useful and informative on the sort of statistics um, um, that um, uh, apply to rural areas. So thank you, Chairman. I don't want to drag this out, um, but I do think 
It is a budget certainly I can support. I like the, the clarity um, that Councillor Payne has already um, referred to. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Firstly, I support everything that I support everything that the first two speakers have said. Uh, perhaps Councillor Payne could explain something to me. I think she used the words, we will be paying £150 per household for those in council tax bands A to D. Uh, did she imply from that that £150 per household tax bands A to D will pass through this council from the government to households to support them paying for their fuel bills? Is that actually, what? Well, that, that's just one question. Um, Secondly, I noticed the comment, the budget is based on the maximum legal precept increase. Uh, I personally would prefer to see a budget based on the minimum possible cost, maximum possible revenue, and from that to fall out at the bottom, the minimum possible uh, council tax precept increase. And could I further say, I support no new further posts on this council at this time. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, um, Councillor Walters, I can comment on the uh, £150 that it does actually pass through um, from the government uh, through us to, to, the, um, um, to the council taxpayer. Thank you. Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, like the previous speakers, I fully support the approach being taken on the budget and the clear way has been explained and the realistic, um, and it's obviously that we have got a lot of challenges ahead and I fully support the work that's already been done by members and by staff in actually working towards achieving that. Um, I just wanted to pick up on the point of recommendation about the cost reduction consultants, if I may, and for a bit of further information on that, it's obvious from the budget saving conversations that we've had so far that actually the, the senior officers in this council um, are highly skilled, but actually do not have the capacity in terms of time to address and embed changes in ways of working. We all accept that the needs, and Councillor Painter said that we need to work out different ways of working, um, which will result in some cough savings. So the enemy of all of this is time. Um, whenever we kick the can down the road, rather than invest in proper inv analysis, debate, then decision, then action, we lose money. So I'm concerned about whether a report from consultants, which would have to be then implemented by the senior management team, is actually a realistic way of doing about, about it and actually a whole business transformation, which may involve investment in personnel. We have an invest to save pot. We have, we do have some um, some reserves. We do have some funds, and I would say that now's the time that we need to seize the opportunity to make those changes to the way we work, to make them quickly, um, and analyze what's involved, and and make sure that we've got the capacity to implement those recommendations and and see them through. And the next two years will be critical to do that. So I'd ask that to be considered as well as look at some cost reduction consultants who might produce a very good report that we actually allocate some resources to make sure that we can actually see those changes through, which will provide the long-term savings that we need. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Powell. Um, we absolutely um, will need to implement whatever recommendations come forward. And if we do need a short-term um, expense to, to, to achieve a long-term gain, say if we need to spend 50K to, to gain two million pound benefit, then, then it's worth it. So, so we'll look at that um, when we've obviously got the report from the consultants, but we do need a critical friend. Um, we need somebody um, who can stand outside of all of it um, and have an objective view about what it is that we need to do 
and people that have had experience in public sector work. Um, no, and, and I've all said many times to Gail that public sector is very different from private sector. I have a private sector background um, and I don't assume that somebody with a private sector background could just walk in and rearrange a council. Um, we, we absolutely need to find and do some real hard thorough due diligence to find somebody who's had experience before of doing something with a council of our sort of size. Um, and, and they should come with that recommendation. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. And I'd completely agree with the, um, the approach to getting some cost reduction consultants. My point was that we need to make sure that we actually allocate sufficient resources yeah. and because it might involve culture change as well as it, and actually that, that we're prepared to allocate some short-term resources to actually achieve those long-term long -term savings and those reports don't just sit on the shelf. Thank you. Leader. Thank you, Ron. To just pick up on the sort of first comment about the FAQs, I think it's down to all of us to actually take the information that we glean while we're in this chamber and while we're reading reports and actually to support our residents. So the future Rutland conversation, which obviously started some of the correspondence and the discussions, and I found that actually if you talk to people, they ask questions, they get a much better understanding. So I would ask all of us to try and just make sure that we uh, are actually sharing the knowledge we have with our residents so that they understand where we are. Thank you. A very brief one, Chair, thank you. Um, it was just with the with regards to the climate change officer. Um, obviously, I was in that scrutiny panel and I list, listened to some very sensible questions. And actually, Councillor Walters, I think you summed that up. We're looking at a you know, potential deficit in 23, 24, and yet we're looking at getting additional staff. Councillor Powell actually has pretty much summed it up for me. We, as a council, know that we need to change what we're doing, whether that's in terms of how we run our organisation to make sure we're delivering the best services possible for our residents, or if it's turning around and saying, actually, by 2050, we need to be net zero. Members, in order to achieve our ambitions, we do actually need to invest in the human resource as well as the resources. If we are to achieve net zero by 2050, which I still think is a very ambitious target, and in fact the Carbon Trust agreed with me this week, we absolutely need to have the expertise whose job it is focusing on that. That means that our transport guys can get on with their transport. Our highways can get on with our their, their highways. Children looked after, adult social services. We need that expertise. So I absolutely respect and acknowledge those points, but sometimes we actually have to be brave and look forward to the future. So thank you, Councillor Powell. That sort of, you've emphasized my point, but I did just want to speak about that because I know that it, it did cause, rightly, some questions amongst members. We don't spend money for the sake of it, but when we need to, I think it is absolutely right and proper that we do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The recommendations are that Council, one, approves the general fund budget for 2022-23, of 42.345 million, section 11. I two approves an increase in council tax of 4.99%, including 3% of the adult social care precept, resulting in a band D charge of 1,917.36, section 10. Three, approves use of the remaining government hardship fund to provide further council tax discounts to the most vulnerable residents, 10.2.2. Delegates authority to the Strategic De Director of Resources in consultation with the portfolio holder with responsibility for finance to administer the council tax energy rebate scheme using new burdens funding as appropriate. 
Five, delegates authority to the Strategic Director for Resources and Strategic Director of, for Adult Services and Health to use the new burdens funding for adult social care charging reforms as required to enable the Council to meet the October 2023 target dates. Six, delegates authority for the Chief Executive or Strategy Director for Resources in consultation with the portfolio holder, portfolio holder with responsibility for finance to continue discussions with cost reduction consultants and spend up to 100K on the viable pr project, 8.3.7. Seven, approves additions and deletions to the capital program as per 12.1.2. Eight, approves changes to earmarked reserves as per 9.2.3. Nine, notes the additional revenue or capital expenditure may be incurred in 2023, funded through 2021-22 budget underspends to be carried forward via earmarked reserves. The use of reserves for budget carrying forwards is not currently shown in the budget but will have no impact on the general fund. 10, approves the estimated surplus of 186K on the collection fund as, in, as at 31, 31st of March, 2022, section 10.3, of which 159,000 is the Rutland share. 11, notes the responses to consultation, section 15. 12, notes the position of on the dedicated schools grant budget, section 14. 13, delegates authority to the S151 officer to make any necessary changes to the budget arising from the council tax decision and or any additional funding received. I will now invite the governance manager to conduct the recorded vote. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Rainsley. Four. Councillor Baines. Four. Councillor Beggy. Four. Councillor Blanksby. Yeah. Councillor Andrew Brown. Four. Councillor Gordon Brown. Four. And... Sorry? Councillor Gordon Brown. In sorry, what did I, sorry, what did I say? <coughs> okay. I think one's answering for the other. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, to put it bluntly. Are, are, the, are the first two Browns both four? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Paul Brown? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Burrows? Four. Councillor Dale? Four. Councillor Fox? Four. Councillor Harvey? Four. Councillor Hemsley? Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor McCartney. Four. Councillor Oxley. Four. Councillor Payne. Four. Councillor Powell. Four. Councillor Stevenson. Four. Councillor Tozeland. Against. Councillor Waller. Four. Councillor Walters. Against. Councillor Wilby. Four. May I interrupt, Chairman? You've not called my name. Uh, and, of course, I am voting for. Thank you. I do apologise, Councillor Ball. <laughs> Chair, apologies again, Councillor Ball. Chairman, I can confirm that there were 20 votes in favour and three against. The motion has passed. Thank you. So we move on to item eight, Council Tax 22-23, pages 219 to 230. This is a report number 40, 2022, Councillor Payne, please. We've actually covered much of the debate regarding the rate of council tax in the previous budget paper and have accepted the rate of 4.99% in the budget already. We are required to vote separately on the rate of council tax for Rutland County Council, which is 4.99%, 3% of this being for adult social care preceptors. 
any decision not to accept the council tax rate at 4.99% will have further adverse effect in, on the medium term financial plan. Uh, there are no changes to empty homes discount, long term empty homes premium, or the local council tax support scheme for 22 23. This paper brings together the resolution for council tax, which I'm proposing tonight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Have a good seconder. Councillor Hemsley, members? No? Okay then, so the recommendations are that Council 1 approves the formal Council tax resolution shown at Appendix A, including a 4.99 Council tax increase, increase for Rutland County Council. 2. Notes no changes to the local Council tax support scheme, LCTS for 2022-23. Three, notes no changes to the empty homes discount from 2022-23. Note four, notes no changes to the long-term empty homes premium from 2022-23. We'll now invite governance again to conduct a recorded vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Ainsley. Four. Councillor Baines. Four. Councillor Beggy. Four. Councillor Blanksby. Three. Councillor Ball. Four. Councillor Andrew Brown. Four. Councillor Gordon Brown. Four. Councillor Paul Brown. Four. Councillor Burrows. Four. Councillor Dale. Four. Councillor Fox. Four. Councillor Harvey. Four. Councillor Hemsley. Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor McCartney. Four. Councillor Oxley. Four. Councillor Payne. Four. Councillor Powell. Four. Councillor Stevenson. Four. Councillor Toesland. Against. Councillor Waller. Four. Councillor Walters. Against. Councillor Wilby. Four. Chairman, once again, with 20 votes in favour and three against, the motion has passed. Thank you very much. So, members, that's, uh, that concludes the business for the meeting. And I declare the meeting closed at 7.56. Thank you for your attendance. Very good for that. How are you feeling?